Hello, Great Elevens, and welcome to this series on Newton's Laws of Motion. In this series, we will investigate the laws that describe how forces affect motion. These laws form the basis of classical physics. So who was Newton? Let's first start by finding out something about the man. Isaac Newton was an English physicist and mathematician. In the 17th century, he published the most influential work of physics of all time. In this book, he defined three laws of motion to describe the relationships between forces that act on an object and the motion of an object. We will start with Newton's third law of motion. Why his third law? This law deals with forces between interacting bodies and shows that forces arise only when two objects interact. The first two laws deal with the effect of this property of objects on each other. The advantage of starting with Newton's third law is to ensure that you do not fall into the trap that force is a property of single objects. Force is between interacting objects. Let's look at what you will learn in today's lesson. You need to be able to state Newton's third law of motion, identify action-reaction pairs of forces, and list the properties of action-reaction forces. Let's start by asking a question. Think about it carefully, and if possible, discuss it with your classmates. Two dogs pull on a rope in opposite directions. On the one side is a large dog. On the other side, there is a small dog. Which side pulls with the largest force? What was your answer to this question? Well, to help us answer the question, let's cross the Nelly. Let's go to a school playground and measure the forces in a tug of war using a couple of spring balances. <laughs> Shoo! Guys, you look like you're really enjoying your game. Okay, do you guys want to know the science behind the game that you play? Sure. Okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to measure the force with which you're pulling against each other, okay? We're going to take the two guys, okay? What's your name? Zueli. Zueli and? Tapel. Okay, you guys grab each side of this. Okay, and now you're going to pull against the spring balance. It looks as if Tapelo and Zueli are both pulling with a force of 50 Newton. Okay, guys, now pull harder and let's see what happens. Now you're both pulling with a force of 70 Newton. Okay, Dineo, why don't you switch with Zueli? Now, the spring balance shows a reading of 50 newtons on both sides again. It seems that no matter who it is that is pulling, the forces are always of the same magnitude. But they're not really exactly the same, are they? What about these forces is different? We're pulling in opposite directions. That's right. They are opposite in direction. The simplest way to show the direction of a force is by using a sign. Let's say that the force to the right is positive 50 newtons. Then the force acting to the left must be minus 50 newtons. This shows that the magnitude of the forces are the same, but they pull in exactly the opposite direction. They have an opposite sign. Sir Isaac Newton made similar observations when he studied the way bodies or objects interact with each other and he described these observations in his third law. Newton's third law states that if body A exerts a force on body B, then body B exerts a force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction on body A. You may be more familiar with the version of this law that says for every action there is an opposite but equal reaction. This is an incredibly important scientific law. This applies to every interaction between two bodies or objects. There are no exceptions. But that doesn't sound right. If the forces are equal but opposite, then why did Dineo move? The forces should have cancelled each other out. 
That is a good question and a common problem when people try to interpret Newton's third law. Let me try to explain with a simple diagram. <laughs> when Tapelo, body A, is pulling Dineo, body B, towards him, he is exerting a force of positive 50 Newton on Dineo, body B. Newton's law says that at the same time, Dineo is exerting a force that is also 50 Newton, but opposite in direction. We write it as minus 50 Newton. These forces are what make the rope taut, but there are other forces acting on Tapelo and Dineo that are not equal. The reason that Dineo starts to move towards Tapelo is not due only to the force in the rope. For example, you can see that Dineo has less mass than Tapelo. In addition, the force of friction between Dineo and the ground may also be less than the force of friction between Tapelo and the ground. It is the effect of the differences in these other forces that result in Dineo moving. Does that clear it up for you? It does, thanks. The action force, my pull, affects Dineo's, and the reaction force, Dineo's pull, affects me. They can't cancel each other out because they don't affect the same person. We have to think about the other forces that also acts on us to explain why one of us moves and the other doesn't. Great. I think you guys get it. The diagram that I used to explain Newton's third law on the playground is called a free body diagram. Free body diagrams are the tools that we use in science to represent forces acting on a body. So let's practice the skill as well as our understanding of Newton's third law by looking at another example. Here we have a book lying on a table. Before we analyze the forces acting in this scenario by drawing a diagram, let me first explain some of the basics of drawing a free body diagram. Forces act through the center of mass of a body, so we can represent the object or body as a dot. The dot shows the position of the center of mass of the body. And this is where we start the arrow that represents the forces that act on the body. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the force, and the arrowhead points in the direction in which the force acts. Remember, to describe a force, we need to identify three things. The agent that is exerting the force needs to be identified. We need to specify the size of the force, and we need to show the direction which the force acts on the object. Let's return to thinking about the forces operating on the book and the table. We'll begin by considering the interaction between the book and the table. Remember, all objects on Earth are pulled down due to gravity. The Earth must be exerting a force on the book. We call this downward force the weight of the book and can draw in an arrow downwards. So we can say that the weight of the book acts down on the surface of the table. Let's assume that the value of the force is equal to 5 Newton downwards, written as minus 5 Newton. But we know from Newton's third law that there must always be a pair of forces. So if the book exerts a force on the table, the table must exert a force on the book. Can you tell what the magnitude and direction of this force are? Well, by applying Newton's third law, we can say that the table exerts a force on the book that has the same magnitude as the weight of the book, but acts in the opposite direction. In other words, upwards. In this case, it must be plus 5 Newton. This upward force is an example of the normal force. In the interaction between the book and the table, the pair of forces can be called contact forces because the book and the table are touching each other. But you will notice that the weight of the book is actually due to the interaction between the earth and the book. In this case, the earth and the book are separated by a distance. The book and the earth are not in direct contact. Does Newton's third law still apply here? Yes, it does. Remember, we said that there are no exceptions to Newton's third law. This means that we have to consider the force the book exerts on the earth. The book must be pulling the earth upward with a force that is equal in magnitude to its weight. That's quite something, isn't it? All the objects on the earth that are subject to a downward gravitational force are actually pulling the earth upwards with an equal and opposite force. It's amazing to think that you and I are exerting a pulling force on the earth. 
For those of you who enjoy speed and motor racing, I'm sure that you'll find this next example exciting. I'm sure you'll agree with me that most of us can only afford this type of car in our dreams, which may not be such a bad thing since there is always the temptation to drive too fast in a high-performance car. If you want to talk about real speed, then let's go to a racetrack. These cars are equipped with jet engines. Jet engines work by pushing hot gas out of an exhaust nozzle. The escaping gas therefore exerts an equal force in the opposite direction on the jet engine and this force propels the vehicle forwards. Do you remember which of Newton's laws makes a similar statement? Newton's third law states that if a body A exerts a force on body B, then body B exerts a force equal in magnitude and in the opposite direction on body A. Rockets work on the same principle. This plastic bottle is pressurized with air, which pushes the water out of its nozzle, lifting it up as the water force out below it. These jet-powered cars are streamlined so they can reach very high speeds. They are designed to minimize air friction. Here are a few more examples. See if you can identify the action-reaction pairs in each case. Horses pull a carriage. A swimmer swims through the water. The horses exert an action force on the carriage, and the carriage exerts a reaction force on the horses. The swimmer exerts an action force on the water, and the water exerts a reaction force on the swimmer. Let's list the properties of action-reaction pairs of forces by looking at the example of the swimmer. Firstly, the action force from object A, the swimmer, is exerted on object B, the water. The reaction force from the water is exerted on the swimmer. The action-reaction pair of forces is equal in magnitude. The action-reaction pair of forces acts in opposite directions. To summarize, the action force is exerted by body A. The reaction force is exerted by body B. The forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. You can practice identifying action-reaction pairs in the task video on Newton's Laws of Motion and visit the Mindset website www.mindset.co.za learn. Join us next time for Newton's first law of motion. Until then, goodbye.